May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be holy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We are entering a new season. Are you excited? Yeah, I sure am. I've been waiting for this season. Y'all know what season I'm talking about? No, it ugly sweater season. Advent. You guys are so churchy. Yes, of course, it is Advent, and I'm glad we get to be together welcoming Advent this morning, but 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 it is also Ugly sweater season, that's a thing now, you know, has been for a little while, wearing ugly Christmas sweaters, like finding really gaudy, overly done, colorful, weird Christmas sweaters to wear to parties and such. When I was a kid, the only people who wore those kinds of sweaters were PTA moms. Y'all remember? Some of you were those moms, that's why you're laughing, you know. And you did not wear those sweaters ironically. No, you just wore them. But it's a thing now. I have my eye on a sweater, not because I I find it especially ugly. Others might, I'm sure. I just really love this sweater. I've seen it online. Because I'm passionate about the establishment it showcases on the front, the Waffle House. It is a Waffle House Christmas sweater. Any Waffle House fans this morning? Raise your hands. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, If you are not raising your hands, don't think you're better than us. Okay. (laughs) Don't think that. I don't need my eggs cooked up all fancy. Sometimes I don't even need my eggs to be real eggs. As long as they look yellow, right? That's what that Cholula hot sauce is for. Just keep dumping it on there. I'm always happy when I leave the Waffle House. I usually feel a need to shower, but I am still always happy. So I'm asking Santa for a Waffle House sweater. In this season, we're putting on all kinds of things. Ugly sweaters, warmer clothes, coats, hats. But we can put on other things this season too, can't we? It can be a trying season, lots of commitments, lots of interactions, parties, and gatherings. It's a season we come into contact with family and friends, even the ones we struggle with, even the ones we have complicated relationships with, even the ones that remind us of things we just rather not be reminded of. It's also a season when we get reminded of the past, of what we no longer have, or maybe what we never had in the first place. We remember old hurts that have not quite healed. We remember words that stung, relationships broken, and so we put on other things, right? We pull out those old resentments from the closet, We wear bitterness like a sweater. We clothe ourselves in impatience and anger and unforgiveness. We put on all these things because we're convinced they'll make us feel warm and comfortable, right? And they do for a while. But eventually they begin to itch. They begin to tug and they pull and they end up leaving us feeling cold. But we keep putting them on. These next four weeks of Advent and on the Feast of the Nativity itself, we're going to do something together. We will be unpacking, we'll be reflecting on and praying through the colics of Advent. The colics of Advent. Now, for those who are unfamiliar or visiting or new to Episcopal worship, a collect is an ancient Christian prayer used in many expressions of the Christian faith, from Catholic to Lutheran, from Eastern Orthodox to our own Anglican Episcopal tradition. It is one way in which we collect ourselves, 
center our thoughts and our intentions around a particular prayer communicating a particular purpose. And the one we heard this morning for our first Sunday of Advent is holding up something for us to consider in this season of putting on. Let's listen to just the very first words again. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Give us grace to cast away the darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. This prayer was composed for the 1549 Book of Common Prayer, but it actually uses language borrowed from all the way back to the 8th century. But its foundation, its root, it's in the letters of Paul. Because it seemed Paul liked to remind the people of God of how they should dress. Even the Greek verb he used in those passages was the one used for actually putting on clothes. As if Paul was saying, look, look, after you wake in the morning and splash cold water across your face, be sure you take from your closet these items. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, put on your new nature. Put on your new nature, the one created to be like God, because God's character is reproduced in you. Put on the new person created to look like God. In Romans chapter 13, he says, leave the clothes of darkness in the back of your closet where they belong. Instead, put on light so God may shine in and through you. And in Colossians, he's helping them actually arrange their wardrobe by saying, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness and humility and patience. And above all, clothe yourselves with love because love makes it all fit together. But it's tough, though, isn't it? I don't know about you, but there are times in my life when I tell myself, okay, Jared, let's do this. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to be more kind. I'm going to be more patient, more compassionate. I'm going to be more loving to all who are in my life, even those I struggle with, not just those closest to me. And I walk out into the new day, and by 10 a.m., I've already lost compassion for some person in my life or treated my wife unlovingly or lost patience with one of my kids or just repeatedly churned some old wound in my thoughts. And all of a sudden, I'm back in that itchy sweater and that coat I knew I should have tossed out years ago. You ever feel that? Here's a couple of things I'm learning, some things I'm working on in my own life, and, and I hope they may offer you some encouragement this morning. First thing, growth is not a linear path. It's not. Growth does not follow along a straight line. Sometimes it's two steps forward, and one step back. Other times, if you're anything like me, it's a step forward and then a backwards tumble down a spiral staircase. So be patient with yourselves. Please, be patient with yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Don't keep a scorecard. One of the things that God's grace means is that it means nothing to us if we don't burn the scorecards. Because Christ finds all of us lost sheep in the wilderness, not in the manicured lawns of self-improvement. So be gracious. Second, if it's grace that saves us, then it's grace that clothes us. And prayer is how that happens. I am slowly slowly beginning to learn that prayer is not a thing I have to do to get closer to God. It's a place where I'm reminded God has been there all along. 
Prayer is not what we do to achieve grace. It's where we go to encounter grace. For me, it's often like this windswept landscape I walk into shivering and cold and scared and God, like some wild-eyed gypsy, meets me on the road. He invites me to take a seat at the fire and holds up before me these garments of compassion and patience and love and he says, you've been wearing those old rags for far too long. Time to change clothes. And all it costs me is to give up the belief that there's something I can do to earn what God wants to give me for free. You see, it's all about grace, which is why the very first words of our collect on this very first Sunday of Advent are, give us grace. Our hope here at St. Andrews this Advent is that you meet that grace, that God, Come to our lessons and carols tonight. Then come party with us after in the parish hall. Be part of the Sunday formation times Margie has put together for us. Come to one of our centering prayer groups that meets multiple times during the week. Come to the Fireside Advent series that Mother Miriam will be teaching through Advent. Join Deacon Dee Dee as she leads us through another blue Christmas. Help Archdeacon Chris with the Angel Tree Project participate in the worship life of this community, and please carry these colics with you, these prayers with you throughout the weeks ahead. See, the intention is not to add to your already busy schedule. It's to provide moments of respite, of rest, of centering and celebration in the midst of that schedule. Just some ways in which we can be reminded of what clothes we're to be wearing this season. Ways we can together cast away the darkness and put on the light of Christ. Amen.